Hi, everyone. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. Thank you for joining us with uh, another webinar series from Rocky DEM. Uh, we are going to start 2022 with Rocky in Action series. Uh, and uh, as you may know, during this year, we're going to have more 15 minutes learning sessions every month. The first one for this month is uh, for powder compression. Before that, I'm introducing myself. I'm Ahmad Haknegatta. I'm uh, from the technical team of Rocky DM. Uh, and I'll be happy to like go over this webinar today and uh, show you an example of the power compression processes. So power compression is widely used in different industries. For example, in pharmaceutical industry, we have tableting processes or uh, by filling in a continuous manufacturing form. Or on the powder metallurgy, we have the pelletizing processes like for pelleting iron ore or plastic or wood material. Uh, what you see on the right side is uh, one, two examples of like compression, uh, which will be applied to powders. And these type of processes can be simulated using Rocky D. Uh, widely as a DM type of simulation. For example, we have roller compaction on top, and at the bottom we have the uh, tablet compaction and tableting process, which is using two punches uh, compacting the powders in the uh, in between a die. And later on, from this type of simulation, we can get the set of information like what is the local void fraction or porosity in the system, what is the local density, as you can see for the tableting example on the right side. And uh, using that, you can control the information, like what is the properties of the powder uh, and what are the operating and design of the process to have an efficient uh, outcome, like those, like to avoid having a large void fraction in the system or segregation zones and as well like have a uniform uh, distribution of powders, if you have mixtures of powders, uh, after uh, they have been compacted. Example that I'm going to go over today uh, during this 15 minutes is for dye filling, uh, specifically it's a batch process, a metal cold compaction process, uh, which we have a feature which is shown on the right picture where the powder will be metal powder will be added in that section Then the feed shoe will move to the right side to the die cavity and inject the particle inside the die cavity later on that die cavity will be punched with uh, another geometry with a certain uh, load of forces applied to the powder to compress them and then uh, we are going to analyze what will happen to this powder Post compression. To do this simulation inside Rocky, we need to follow a set of steps, which is very common pre processing in any simulation uh, process and simulation task. First, we need to import the geometries. Here we have uh, four geometry we have the shoe feeder, we have the punch, uh, punch geometry, which is shown as the red object. We have a bottom mold, which hold the whole piece together. And then we have an ejection piece who uh, gives us the compacted form of the power. Then we need to set the motions for these, each of these geometries, set materials and material interaction, both for the particle and the boundary. And uh, after that, we can start running the simulation after absolutely defining the size distribution of the particles and the properties related to the particles. And then finally start post-processing and get the information from the simulation. Here, uh, I have a setup before and I'm going to go over different parts of how we can set it up inside Rocky. Uh, follow the data tree on the left side where we first define the contact models for our model. Here specifically, we add the adhesive force for the simulation to uh, let the metal powders at the end hold themselves together. We have different geometries, as I mentioned, mold, shoe feeder, punch, and injector. As you see, when I select on them, they'll be shown in the 3D. And then next step is that 
we have to define the motion frames and movement of these geometries. There are three motions, and I'm going to open a motion preview to see the motions prior to running the simulation. So the shoe feeder motion, the one that you can see a local coordinate for it, has two translational type of motion, which basically have a back and forth motion in negative z direction based on the velocity 0.075 meter per second. If I move the time bar, then I can see the motion prior to running the simulation to make sure that the setup that we have is correct. Right. Then the second motion is for the punch. So this punch should move downward in y direction. Uh, but what we want is actually we want to give it a certain load or uh, force uh, through this punch to be applied to the powders and compact them. First, we have the free body translation, which let the body freely move. And then we have that certain load, which is, you can see, is negative 500 Newton per second, which will be applied. And then at the end, we want to move this punch upward to uh, be able to analyze the compacted part. Last part is the ejector motion, which is that uh, bottom surface which will move upward to bring the compact form of the powder up so that we can have it. As you saw, each of the motion had their own local coordinates, and uh, we were able to see them prior to running this in. Next, we need to define the material properties for our model. For boundaries, we define the default properties. Uh, let's say it's for the stainless steel. And then for metal powders, we define the uh, important parameters that we need is density and Young's modulus of the particles. Next, we need to define the interaction parameters for our simulation. Uh, what is important here, for example, interaction between metal powder and powder is a particle particle interaction. We added some type of adhesive force between these uh, particles because post compaction, we want them to hold onto each other. That's how we mimic uh, some type of sintering or like uh, fusing of these particles together using uh, adhesive force. And then uh, for the powders, we define the particle size distribution. As you can see, we have. Uh, Two size defined, with, uh, which will gives us a particle size distribution. We define the material. Then uh, other tabs, we don't need to adjust anything as long as we are using the spherical type of particles. Next thing is that we want to inject this particle inside the shoe feeder. So one of the methods that Rocky let us import the particles, inject the particles into the system using the volume field. We just need to define a region define the amount of mass, and then system the Rocky is going to inject these particles at the initial state of the simulation inside the region that we define. So we define the seed coordinate where these particles should be started to be injected, and then we define the geometries to bound the injection of particles to those geometries, because we don't want the particles to, for example, go outside the shoe. This is almost done, then we can start the simulation. We can go to solver and define the simulation duration. Here we have something around like five second simulation. And then output frequency, which gives us how often we get the information out of the simulation. And then we can start the simulation uh, and then uh, start doing the post-processing. So here I move forward uh, after the simulation was completed. I just want to show you like what is the kind of results that you can get. As you can see, the part is shown in red color. They are added in the shoe feeder. They will be go to the die cavity and then they'll be punched by the punch geometry. And then the last is the, the ejector will bring the or compacted part. You can look at other properties of this part is like the particle size, you can see because we had particle size distribution, you can see the uniformity of this particle. You can see the translational velocity, for example, or much more uh, properties related to particles. So here, let me uh, disable the geometries. I'm going to create a cylinder region just around the compacted form of the particles because 
I want to analyze information of void fraction for this region. So I create a cylinder, focus only on the region that I want, uh, and collect only the particles that I want to analyze using a, a cylinder shape. I basically just need to define the center and size uh, to define the cylinder. Next thing, we create an Eilerian statistic, which basically convert from this discrete domain to a continuous domain by discretizing the domain. So you can see radial tangential and axial division gives us a continuous type of mesh, volume mesh into the domain. And the collection of information for each of those particles will be shown as one cube, as one uh, being inside the Eilerian statistic which leads us to be able to analyze information like the volume fraction of the system, because uh, these are like the continuous type of information that needs the information, the volume information of the domain. That shows the amount of particles in system versus the volume of each of these things. That uh, will help us to know where are the segregation zones, where are the regions where most of the particles are uh, accumulated, what are the regions that the particles could not get into, which will be helpful for us to analyze our system. So here on the right side, the video show uh, other type of analysis that we can do, like using the same method, we can get the porosity, we can create cross sections and see through different parts of the uh, compacted form of powders. We can also tag the particles, see where these particles came from inside the shoe feeder that ultimately uh, been added to the back cavity. And we can see this information in a translational form. We don't need to see just at the end of the simulation. Like you can, during the simulation, you can see what happens in the micro scale in the system. And at the end, what's going to really affect this simulation is other properties, like what was the particle size that lead to different uniformity inside the compacted form? What was the flowability and the cohesion used uh, and which inherited from the powder properties, which lead to uh, the outcomes of the simulation? And also design and the conditions that we define, like those motions, the amount of load that will be applied through the punch and how uh, the mold die cavities uh, design, these, this shape will affect also the outcome, uh, outcome of the simulation. Like what's the uniformity of these powders in the system? What is the segregation zones? What are the local porosity and void fraction at different parts of the model? Uh, and ultimately by using the simulation, you can go back and optimize uh, the information of your system, like the design and condition or you can test it for different powder properties. And ultimately, in a bigger picture, you can create reduced order models, which basically help you to uh, be able to resolve those hidden layers of neural network between these different properties that affect the outcome of the simulation. And all of them are done using first principle simulation engineering. With that, uh, I want to end this session for the power compression. Uh, but remember that we have more webinars coming. Uh, every month we have one 15 session uh, this year that goes over different uh, simulation and processes. Feel free to join. And thank you for being with us today with this webinar.